Well, hello and welcome uh, to Esquire Group's webinar on tips for choosing an expat tax preparer. We're going to try a little bit of a different format today. Uh, we're going to do this all in video with no slides. Uh, and so I hope you enjoy the new format. And uh, so, yeah, let's get started. Uh, as always, my name is Jimmy Sexton. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group, an international tax advisory and compliance firm. And um, I'm coming to you today from Dubai. Uh, as always, this uh, webinar is for educational purposes only. It is not uh, tax advice and should not be construed as such. So today we're gonna to be talking about uh, tips for choosing an expat tax preparer. And I think that this is a pretty um, relevant topic given that we're at the top of the, top of the year and uh, people are out starting to begin to think about their taxes and uh, who they're gonna hire to do those taxes. And there's a lot of companies out there these days that uh, are advertising uh, expat tax preparation, international tax preparation. Uh, but as with all things, there's only a few people that are really, really good at it. Uh, I like to think we're pretty good at it, uh, but there's also uh, a lot of other companies out there that are very, very good. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing that you should look at when considering uh, an expat tax preparation preparer or firm is are they specialized? Uh, preparing expat taxes is, is fairly complicated. Uh, there's a lot of nuances in the law and uh, someone who's not specialized in it is not going to have uh, the type of knowledge necessary to uh, completely and accurately prepare uh, an expat's tax return. Uh, there's a lot of people out there where uh, international tax or expat tax preparation is, you know, something they say, oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's something we do. Uh, when it comes to international tax, expat tax preparation, you don't want somebody uh, that also does international tax or expat tax. You want somebody that only does uh, international or expat tax. That, that's really, really important. Uh, just like with medical professionals or legal professionals. Uh, you don't want a general practitioner for a very specialized area. Get a specialist. Um, number two, what are their experience and qualifications? Uh, one of the things a lot of people don't know is that uh, the U.S. does not require any type of education or license to prepare tax returns. So you don't have to be a CPA or an enrolled agent or a lawyer uh, or even have a college degree to prepare tax returns. Uh, it's, it's scary to know, but anybody, uh, including uh, the clerk at uh, a fast food restaurant, could open up a tax preparation company tomorrow, and that would be completely legal. Um, so it's very important that you look at the person's experience and qualifications. So, you know, generally speaking, you want somebody uh, that has an education in tax, accounting, or, or law and that is, has, has studied in those fields, preferably um, uh, you know, somebody who has an advanced degree in those fields, maybe somebody that's an enrolled agent or, or a CPA. Uh, and you also wanna look at their experience. You know, if they, this is uh, you know, something that they've just gotten into, you wanna make sure that they have superiors that have uh, you know, proper experience so that they can properly oversee them. Uh, so the experience and specialization is, is, is very, very critical. Um, what are the tax company's review procedures? Uh, this is something very important. You know, not, somebody shouldn't just prepare um, your tax return and then hand it to you. If you're hiring a, a, a quality tax preparation from that return should be reviewed by either a superior or uh, a senior uh, tax preparer or manager in that company. Uh, to ensure that there aren't any mistakes. Uh, you know, I mean, we're all human and it can happen that, uh, you know, there's a typo in a number or a name or a checkbox that was forgotten and having a second set of eyes uh, go through that to ensure accuracy is very, very important. Um, unfortunately, with a lot of firms um, or people that are only have one professional, uh, there's not any real review procedures. 
And a lot of companies that are sort of these, these tax return mills that prepare, you know, that hundreds or thousands of tax returns per year. One of the risks is that the returns are not reviewed adequately. Uh, some of the, some of the larger firms, you know, they'll have one reviewer, uh, to review the returns that were prepared by, uh, you know, multiple underlings. So a, a common practice in a lot of large firms is that you have a few licensed experienced preparers that sign the returns, but the returns are actually prepared uh, by much less experienced and educated underlings. And I've, I've interviewed uh, a few of, of these, uh, you know, return reviewers from these larger firms before, and some of them claim to have reviewed a thousand tax returns in a year. There's no way you can adequately review a thousand tax returns in, 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 in a year. Um, so it, it's very important to look at what the review procedures are um, and how many, uh, who's actually preparing the return. Is it the person signing it or are they relying on, on the work of, of an underling? Um, and then how in-depth are the review procedures and how many returns are the reviewers reviewing per year uh, to make sure that uh, it passes the smell test? Because uh, at the end of the day, if a return gets submitted with an error on it, uh, it's not the return preparation company that's ultimately on the hook with the IRS. It's, it's you, the taxpayer. Um, the, the next question is, do they have a PTIN, a prepared tax identification number? Uh, this is a, a, a number uh, issued by the IRS. It's, it's individual to each tax preparer. It's required to uh, prepare U.S. tax returns. So if you meet a tax preparer that does not have one, uh, then be uh, aware that you shouldn't use them. Uh, you want to make sure that the person does have a P-10 and, and is registered with the IRS. Um, so, you know, you know who they say they are. Uh, and if, you know, for some reason they were to do anything uh, illegal or something like that, that uh, uh, the IRS would have record of who this person is. Um, how familiar are they, how the U.S. tax system interacts with uh, the tax system of the country where you are resident or where you have income from. So, you know, the, the, so the U.S. tax laws, as most people know, are, are quite complex. Uh, and if you live in another country, you're subject to two tax regimes. You're subject to the, the tax regime of the country where you're a resident, and you're subject to the tax regime of the United States. And those two tax systems interact uh, with on a wide range of, of items um, on, on, on income tax, on how pensions are treated, what different types of entities there are, all kinds of different things. And it's very difficult for one preparer uh, to know how the, all the tax systems in the world interact with um, the United States. So it's important that when you're interviewing a tax preparer that you try to understand their level of knowledge uh, of the tax system where you live and how it interact, interacts with the U.S. tax system. Uh, if it's somebody that's completely unfamiliar with the interaction, um, you know, it doesn't mean that they can't get familiar and do a great job. It just means that it might take them a little longer uh, to get it done, but this is something that you definitely want to check. Uh, one of the other things that you want to look at is, does the firm use only in-house employees or do they use seasonal contractors? One of the things a lot of people are unaware of is that many tax preparation firms hire a bunch of seasonal tax preparers to increase capacity during tax season. This is how tax preparation firms can pump out thousands of returns in a very short window of time. This kind of goes back to a point I was making a few minutes ago um, about these tax return reviewers that are the ones signing the tax returns, um, but not actually preparing them. And so this is, this is something that's quite common that a firm will hire uh, a lot of these seasonal contractors who often are not licensed, uh, are not adequately educated, but they'll work very cheaply for exactly because uh, they're not educated uh, or, or, or licensed. And they'll prepare the vast majority of these returns. 
Uh, and I think that really undermines quality because there's no way you can hire somebody uh, for three or four months uh, and have adequately vetted their their knowledge and their their their, their qualifications and 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 their their work ethic uh, b before putting them to work preparing returns. Uh, and then if you have somebody that's reviewing a thousand tax returns, there's a very high likelihood that something uh, could slip through the cracks. So that's one thing that I, I highly advise clients to look at when interviewing a tax preparation firm is, you know, don't, I wouldn't look to companies that, that hire a lot of seasonal employees because it really undermines quality. And also you're never going to, or often, I won't say never, uh, but, it, but often if you work with a company that hires these seasonal employees, the seasonal employees are different every year because they go to the highest bidder uh, during tax season. And so uh, you not, you're not going to have a preparer that you work with year after year that knows the nuances of your return, your personality, that you have a relationship with. Um, and that's something that I think is, is very important because everybody's tax return is unique. There's always nuances. There's always things that have to be remembered every year for specific clients. Uh, and if, if, if you don't have that return preparer that you go to year after year, um, you're going to miss out on, on that. Um, uh, something else is that you want to ask is, is what do they charge? Uh, you know, do they charge hourly? Do they charge a flat fee? Is it a combo? Uh, is there transparency? Can you see the time being worked as, as, as it goes along? And a couple things that I think is very important to keep in mind is uh, that you have, as the client have a little bit of responsibility here too. I mean, a lot of times people, when they go get a tax preparation quote, um, they just kind of think to themselves, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm an employee. They make this, the, 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 their situation sound very simple. Uh, and, then as the, as, and then as the tax preparation process starts, it comes out that the situation is, is quite a bit more complex, uh, and which often leads to a higher price tag for the return uh, and, and ultimately a, a, a uh, unhappy client because the return's more than they thought it was going to be. But you also have to remember that the return wound up being more work for the preparer than they thought it was going to be. Uh, so it's very important that that pricing is that, that, that the details of your return are transparent from your part and that the pricing from the firm is transparent from their part. So you both get um, what what you what what you bargained for. Uh, one of the things that I would would add to the pricing is I know there's a lot of companies out there that are advertising, you know, 450 bucks for an expat tax return. Uh, I would be very weary of these companies. I mean, just as a little bit of math, you know, the average tax return for, for, and I'm talking about a fairly, you know, simple tax return, you know, somebody that has some wages, maybe a little bit of interest income, uh, a foreign bank account to report on an FBAR, uh, takes about eight or nine hours. Uh, a lot of people ask, wow, how can it take eight or nine hours? But if you think about it, you know, there's, there's correspondence with the client, uh, then you have to organize the source documents, you have to convert the source documents into US dollars, then you have to fill out the return, it has to be reviewed, then the client needs to review it, you have to answer questions before it can even be filed. So, you know, it's not as simple as just dropping the numbers in the return. So if you see somebody advertising a $450 return, uh, I, I'd like you to keep this in mind that, you know, even uh, a relatively, uh, let, let's say a decent expat tax preparer makes about 65 grand a year, uh, which comes out to, you know, 31.25 an hour. So uh, if, if, if a return takes eight hours, that means just the cost for the preparer's time uh, is 250. And when you figure that, a fir that, that the cost of, of payroll is a small percentage of what it costs to, to run a company. Um, and then you tag on the, the admin staff, uh, you, you tag on offices, technological infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. Uh, somebody offering a tax return for, for 450 bucks is really doing you uh, an injustice. Uh, and, and that's just on a very, very simple tax return. Um, uh, number nine, uh, what security measures do they take? 
Uh, you know, one of the things that you want to be very careful of is that your data is handled in a secure manner. You know, there's a lot of identity theft out there, um, you know, and fraud, things like that. And you want to make sure that your data is being being uh, kept securely. You know, do they have a client portal uh, that you can access online? How secure is it? Um, when they email uh, sensitive financial data, uh, is that encrypted or password protected? Um, where are their servers? Do they have backups? Things like that. Now, these are all questions that you want to ask because, you know, what happens if, if their, uh, you know, system goes down? Is your data going to be lost or do they have a backup? So this is, this is I think, something that's very important um, to ask. And uh, how long have they been in business? Uh, I mean, if you're going to be entering into a relationship on something as serious as, as taxes with a firm, you want to make sure that they've been, been around a while um, so that you can be confident that they'll be around in the future. Um, and so this is something that, uh, you know, I think that you should did ask somebody is how long have you been around? Um, and this is not just important. This isn't just important for purposes of are they going to be around in the future, but this is also important for, you know, how efficient are their business processes? How, how, how um, encompassing are their business processes to make sure that you can be confident that things aren't going to slip through the cracks and so on and so forth. Um, so this is, so that's something that I think uh, is very important to look into. Uh, that brings us to the conclusion of our webinar on uh, tips for choosing an expat tax preparer. I hope that you found this uh, helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, as always, you can go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar control panel right now. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I don't see any coming through, so then I will wish everybody a good day, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're located. I uh, hope to see you on a future Esquire Group webinar. Uh, if you have any questions or need to contact us for any reason, uh, you can contact us through our website at esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.